Hey guys, welcome back to Finding My Star. Today's video, I'm going to be doing my two month as a mother update. Um, we have been a family for two months now, and I'm gonna not cry during this video. That's my goal. It's not gonna work. <laughs> Just a disclaimer, quickly, um, before I get started. If you are struggling to conceive, or you are in the process of adopting and having a hard time, don't watch this video. Um, I I know how hard it is to be in the process and struggling and being like not wanting to hear people complain about it because it yes I am so grateful I have my kid I have my kid we are done she is home um, and I fully remember all the times I would hear people complain and I'm like F you you have your kid <laughs> And so, um, being on the other side of it though, I don't want this to be a sunshines and rainbows, everything is fine when things aren't fine. And so I kind of, I want to talk about the hard stuff. And so if you don't want to hear about the hard stuff, if you don't want to hear me complain about some stuff, please skip this video. Um, I don't mean in any way that I don't love my daughter and I'm not grateful for her. I just don't want it to be, I want this to be real and honest and raw. I don't want it to be um, fluff, if that makes sense. So if you're having a hard time, if you're struggling to conceive, please just skip it. Um, I won't be offended. I won't even probably know. Um, I won't know in general, but um, yeah, just skip it because it's not worth your heartache to go through um, this video with me complaining about quite a few things because month two was hard. So yeah, so um, we have been a family for two months, um, almost exactly. Today's the 15th of, what month are we on? November. I can't, don't remember what it was like without having her. Um, I feel like we've gotten into a good routine. If you want to see her, her update about her, I will post that up in the cards. Um, but basically, I feel like we got into a good routine for the most part. Um, I feel like I actually somewhat know what I'm doing. Um, it's just really weird when they hand you a kid and say, there you go. Now you're completely responsible for them. And it's hard sometimes <laughs> to have that responsibility, especially as we start with some of this medical stuff. And it's like, you need to make a decision, a medical decision, and you need to make it about someone else. Whereas sometimes like those decisions, um, it's like, oh, if I choose not to do that for myself or I choose to do something for myself, that's that's my, my choice as a person um, and it's gonna affect me. Whereas now it's like, you need to make this medical decision for your child and weigh the risks or of pros and cons of everything, make a decision and that decision affects them. Oh, she's waking up. And it's, it's, it's hard sometimes. <laughs> also, I feel like with all her therapies and all her appointments, we have so much going on and I'm juggling a lot of stuff. And I know some of the medical stuff, like a lot of the testing, for instance, once we get all the things tested and all the initial, like, appointments done, a lot of that's going to be like, oh, every six months we do this or every year we do this. It's going to, it's going to kind of level out. Whereas now it's kind of like everything being thrown at me, but also just trying to be like, oh yeah. And I, I'm trying to work on sign language with her and I got to remember to work on this for PT and this for speech and OT wants us working on this, but she's had a rough day, but we need to work on it. Like just sometimes it's overwhelming. Um, for me too, I really like my me time and I knew that would be hard to lose. Um, but with a child that is very independent, I feel like I'm neglecting her. <laughs> so there's a lot of times where she'll be playing by herself and I will be on my tablet or I will be playing on the computer and it's like, oh yeah, I have a kid. <laughs> It's like, oh, it's been two hours since the diaper change. It probably should do that. And she's not in any danger. I'm right there. It's just playing with her is boring. I, I don't know how to put it in any other way. Um, physical development, she is well, she's doing really good. Um, but the, the cognitive development is still like a three to six month old. And it's super boring sometimes because there's nothing really that she does. She shakes, rattles, she puts things in her mouth. So she, she just doesn't know how to play. It's just, 
like, here's a thing, I shake it for her, she giggles a bit, I shake it some more, she giggles. And as, as a person on the other end, like, shaking this stupid thing for an hour, <laughs> it's like so bloody boring. And I got some toys for Christmas for her that I'm like, hmm, this probably isn't going to work. <laughs> I think the one, I'm going to post a video, but uh, what is it, like 12 to 36 months. <laughs> and she's not going to grasp any of it. And it's kind of hard to be like, I got you this toy because I think it'll be fun to play together. But I don't think she's going to get it. Um, when we did our, I think I ordered it before. Yeah, I ordered it before we had our team meeting with our therapists, and seeing her with a lot of the toys at the therapy session, it was like, yeah, she's not, that's not going to work. Um, just, she just doesn't grasp anything, it's just, everything just goes in her mouth, or she shakes it, <laughs> depending on if it's a shakeable object or not. And it's, kind of, it's, it's boring to play with her, to be honest, um, and there's only so much physical lifting and dropping and rocking and swinging and like the having her climb on me that I can handle very much touched out um, a lot of the time where it's like even poor Taylor I'm like please just don't touch me I'm done <laughs> I'm done with today um, I like I, I like my bubble and everyone she's she's in my bubble all the time and I don't mean that as a bad thing because she's attaching to me really well and if she comes to me for a to be held 99% of the time I'm picking her up and holding her um, so it's it's one of those things where I have I'm sucking it up and dealing with the kind of thing but it's it's hard sometimes and so when I have those moments where she doesn't want to be held not in like a I don't want to be held in a negative way but in a she's just playing by herself and she's not requiring to be held I try to like step back and do something for me but then like I said like two hours later I'm like oh crap I probably should feed her or like remembering that I need to do something with her or remembering that she exists. Not not that I forget that she exists, but just, you know what I mean? Like being like, I should probably interact with my child. But I just, if you have any ideas for stuff to do with her, even like some, like we were trying to, I was planning to play peekaboo with her and she just doesn't know, get it. Um, I've tried to do some songs like finger plays and stuff and nope. <laughs> It's just so hard because she's so developmentally young, um, but physical development is much further. So she, she'd be at that stage where you put the baby on a play mat and they have things dangling and they kind of swing their hands and feet at them. That's where she is cognitively. But physically doing that, she's just going to rip the whole player down <laughs> and chew on it and it's just, just not going to work. So it's just so weird to have this big this big gap between where she is physically and cognitively and and just in communication wise too it's just it's hard sometimes to 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 interact with her when I don't feel like I'm getting anything like it's not entertaining for me it's not fun for me um, and I do it because I'm her mother and I need to do it but it's not fun um, I'm currently doing um, a disconnect on the weekend um, it's Sunday when I'm filming this. Um, I don't know when this is going to go up, but Sunday the 15th. Um, and I'm hoping to do it every weekend because I feel like being forced to disconnect. I shut down my computer completely and my tablet is off and the TV can't go on, nothing. Um, it kind of forces me to sit there and play even though it's boring as hell. I can't even read a book to her because the moment I do, she eats it. We do read Goodnight Moon almost every night, but it's it's a speed read <laughs> because it's like she just wants to chew on the pages so I don't know it's just she's at this she's just at a stage where it's just it's, as the parent it's not fun and if she was a, a, a typical child um, she would be at a stage where a lot of it's spent being just held or being down on a play mat playing by herself um, for short periods of time and then being held. She'd be fed more often, she'd be diapered more often. Like, it's just, when when it's not matching up with her physical development, it's just, it's hard. Um, the other thing really hard this month that I'm gonna try not to cry through, but I can feel it coming already. Poop on poop. <laughs> I talked about it in her video and I cried. <laughs> um, but she, 
she really struggled after my parents left, um, and that was really hard for me. Not even just from, from a, I can't help her standpoint, but from a, what the hell am I doing standpoint. If you didn't watch her video, basically she screamed from Friday afternoon until Sunday after supper. Um, the only time she stopped screaming was when she passed out from exhaustion and slept. She screamed during meals, diaper changes, everything. And she didn't want to be held, she didn't want to be touched. And I feel like it really harmed my attachment to her. Um, I've talked about it a lot for, for a long time now. That I'm struggling to attach to her and I know it's going to take time. But I feel like those days really pushed me backwards. Not being able to comfort her and just listening to her scream and her scream, her trauma cry is like as if she broke her own. It is not just a I'm upset kind of cry. It is literally screaming. Screaming. And to listen to that and not be able to help at all. There was a lot of, I can't do this, but I don't have a choice. Because, not that I'm stuck with her now, but like, um, I'm her mom and this is my job now. And no matter how hard it is, this is my job. This is what, I'm, I'm, this is just who I am now. And as much as I don't want to deal with it, I have to. But, like, there was times where I'm like, should I just get earplugs? <laughs> because I, I can't, I can't take this anymore. And when she won't let me touch her or hold her, it was a lot of, she would sit on a play mat and I would go in my room and cry. Because I don't feel like me being upset around her that is helpful in any way. And when I feel like I'm losing patience and losing my sanity, <laughs> often the best thing is just to walk away and have my own little meltdown. <laughs> but so many times I was just like, please just shut up for five minutes so I can have a break. And like I said, I feel like it really harmed me feeling attached to her because how do you feel a bond to this thing that is just screaming? And I'm grateful it wasn't longer than <laughs> it was because I, unfortunately I know parents that have dealt with screaming for months and I don't know how they deal with it because uh, it was rough. I think it also maybe is hard because I have no breaks. Um, I I can't be like, hey, husband, you need to be with her right now so I can go for a walk or I can go to the grocery store alone and just have a breather. I couldn't even take her anywhere because, I mean, she can't just scream forever. <laughs> out of the house so and I don't feel comfortable with people watching her um in general but I mean we're only two months in I don't feel like our it's good for people to be watching her and then if she's screaming like that I don't feel like that's a good time for me to leave her with someone else um it's different if you have a husband or a wife or whatever partner of some sort because they are the other half parent um but for me not having another another half of a parent um it's not something that i feel feel is is appropriate to have someone else be there during that time so yeah it was rough um but we got through it we survived <laughs> um i like I said, I've been I'm doing like a disconnect of technology. Um, let's get back onto something a little more 
a little less this <laughs> um but I'm doing a disconnect and it's been really good um I have a little notebook that I write down things like okay I want to search up this I need to look up this um I need to do xyz um and when I go back online um it's it's boring at times because like I said she doesn't know how to play but in terms of I'm trying to reconnect why am I crying again I'm trying to reestablish that bond with her. Um, me, me to her, not her, her to me. Um, because I feel like her to me is going perfectly fine. Um, but for me to feel like, for me to feel like I deserve to be her mom, that I'm capable of being her mom, that I can comfort her, that that I'm not this failure because I can't soothe her. Basically that I, I'm, I'm good enough. And that over time I know we'll probably have a million more rough days. But at the end of the day, we're, we're okay. <laughs> she will be okay. I will be okay. Taylor will be okay. <laughs> that that even if she has days of screaming, it's not, not my fault. Like, I can't fix everything. Hi. Oh, are you coming to tell me your sister's waking up? Yeah. Let, let her sleep a little longer. Um, that is okay that I can't fix everything. And that, that, Things, things are going to be hard, and that's okay, and having emotions is okay, feeling frustrated is okay, feeling upset is okay, feeling bored is okay, <laughs> oh, it's just, it's sometimes hard, and also like, like I said at the very beginning about if you're struggling, don't watch this video, because Sometimes I feel like those times when I'm frustrated and I'm like, just go to sleep or just stop crying. I'm like, this is what you asked for. This is what you wanted. This is what you fought for. And now you're complaining about it. But at the end of the day, even though she's totally worth it and there's so many, so many more wonderful moments, it doesn't take away how hard things can be in the moment. There's also absolutely nothing that can prepare you for trauma. Um, I've read a bazillion books. I've talked to a million people. Um, but until you're in that moment hearing your child scream for days on end, nothing, nothing can prepare you for that. And not knowing, like I said, in that case, I'm pretty sure it was my parents leaving. But there's times where I don't know um, what's caused it. And not having that communication, not having that information, nothing can prepare, prepare you for what what you, like, for what that's going to be like. And when you can't fix it and you're someone that likes to fix things, it, it's hard. Um, there's certain things like feeding trauma, for instance. There's a great book called Love Me, Feed Me, and there's so many good resources in there. Um, that I feel like her feeding trauma I can handle better. Um, but there, there's things that I can't fix and it's, it's really hard. Um, I think the parenting in general, I think we're doing really well or I'm doing really well. Um, obviously she's not parenting herself. <laughs> Taylor, Taylor, my joint parent. Taylor, you want to come here? Um, the amount of times I say, hey, watch your sister. <laughs> Were you watching your sister while she sleeps? Tilly is just like bouncing back from me to Emerus. Um, you want to come, come up here? Yeah, I feel like the, the parenting, the parenting as a parent, um, I was prepared for. I was prepared for um, losing my me time. I was prepared for how much, how hard it is to go grocery shopping. Um, now that winter has hit, I'm um, dealing with stupid, flipping 
coats and car seats um, and not having a puffy coat on in the car but then needing to have some sort of coat for going anywhere because if I don't put a coat on her even though it's five feet away people are going to judge me. Um, so I was prepared for a lot of the parenting stuff and I was prepared for the attachment stuff um, but there's there's nothing I don't think anything that can prepare you for how much trauma your child has and um, dealing with that trauma. Um, a lot of the medical stuff, okay, like the appointment, the amount of appointments is frustrating, but I, it's whatever. Um, dealing with, with medical stuff in general, whatever. Um, it's, it's that trauma that's been really hard this month. Um, and I talked about it in her video, but she was struggling to sleep and then it, that was really hard because it's like, just go to sleep. I'm shaking this rattle. I'm singing the same bloody song for hours on end. And in my head, I'm going, shut up. <laughs> just shut up and go to sleep, please. Shut up and go to sleep, please. Shut up and go to sleep, please. Um, because I was just so exhausted. Um, but I moved her into my room and everything was fine. <laughs> um, so, so that, that was a struggle, struggle too. Cause like when she's just screaming for hours, like that was not usually a trauma cry. That was kind of just to her, I want to be with you cry, which I didn't realize it at the time. Um, now that I've moved her into my room and I've realized she's just looking for me, it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> whatever. Um, but it's just one of those things where it's like, just, just go to sleep. Not that hard. Close your eyes. <laughs> but at this, this developmental stage, I can't just tell her, close her eyes, go to sleep. Um, she falls asleep when she's exhausted. That's how babies work, right? They just sleep when they're tired. Um, and I think moving her into my room has helped with that too because I don't have like a set bedtime. We have our set quiet time where we go into the room, she goes in the play yard, I go into my bed and I read. Occasionally she does come in the bed with me um, and we have some like quiet cuddle time together depending on how grabby she is with the dog. But for the most part, it's um, she goes in her crib and her play yard and we just have some quiet time until we fall asleep. Um, I lost my train of thought. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, we had our first um, our first post report, which was stupid. Um, we had that like a while ago. I want to say like two weeks ago, um, before all the hard stuff happened. <laughs> Uh, some of the, some of the, I think she was moved back into my room by the time we had our first report, report. So we had some of that nighttime issues, um, but we definitely did not have those rough days, um, which is so stupid. It's like, you've been home a month, here's your first post report. But the thing is, she has to write it, submit it to the government, and the government submits it to the agency. The agency then gets it translated. Like, it's so many steps. So, um, a lot of that was stupid. I think it was like two hours long, um via zoom she originally f said that she had to come and i was like i don't want people in my house um i don't have a choice with occupational therapy um but beyond that i don't want people in my house um covid like d pandemic why are you requiring me to have a stranger in my house during a pandemic for for a report that can be done over the phone so anyway so i was frustrated by that but then it turned out that they didn't have to come so she was able to do it over zoom but it was just, I don't know, I thought like when I was done and had her home, I would be done with the adoption BS. And this was just more adoption BS. And I had to keep reminding myself like when I was answering that they aren't going to take her away from me if she's not having perfect times. <laughs> They're not going to take her away from me. Um, they. This is not a judgment of my parenting. Um, if she's not eating solids, um, it is not a judgment on my parenting if she's not walking. Um, because I just feel like with the post report stuff, a lot of the questions, Taylor's on my lap now. So if I'm looking down, that's what I'm looking at. Um, I just feel like a lot of the post report stuff was the same bull that was in my home study and that constant like judgment and like the feeling of judgment, whether or not it's there, but that feeling of being judged constantly um, and uh, 
<laughs> and having all these people read a report and decide, am I a good mom? And I know that's not what the post reports are. The post reports are meant for Bulgaria to be like, yes, international adoption was the best choice for her. Um, which, I mean, you look at just how her feeding and her physical development has progressed in the last two months, um, clearly, she's <laughs> in a way better position. Um, but it's hard after having so many home studies and having home so many struggles to become a mom. To not have that feeling like they're judging. And I'm grateful I will never have to do another home study, but I have three more post reports. <laughs> and I am completely honest with them. So, depending on how she's doing in the next one, could be talking about some hard stuff. And it's hard sometimes too to not be like, Orphanage life messed her up in ways that I can never fix. Medical reports being inaccurate in ways that is now causing her to have to go through testing that she should have never had to gone through, go through because if I had an accurate report, I wouldn't have to do to her. Um, I don't know, just some of that stuff that's just... It's frustrating. It's, it's so frustrating. I'm glad I'm never adopting again because I don't think I could go through more home studies um, at all. I'm not even looking forward to doing three more post reports. Um, but I had to keep reminding myself, like, none of this matters. None of this matters. Your daughter is home. She's home. <laughs> you not being able to calm her during a trauma cry for three days does not make you a bad mom. Stepping away because she's been crying for three days and going to your room to cry is not neglect. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's hard sometimes to be like, hard on yourself or not to be hard on yourself. Especially when you fought for so long to get here and then things are hard. And not that I regret anything, but like those couple of days I was like, what the hell did I do? <laughs> what did I do? Um, I don't know. It's, just, it's been a hard month. My battery's going to die. And I wanted to film a cloth diaper update, but I, I need to fix this all anyway. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's been a hard month. We got through it though. I just, I'm just hoping that we can, that I can repair my bond with her. Not her bond with me because I feel like her bonding with me is fine. Um, but me bonding to her, if that makes sense. Am I going the right way with this? Her, her feeling like my daughter. And I need to fix that because this was a hard month. Hard month. Anyway, I'm going to go and get another long video, although this is half the length of the last one. And I think I spent more time crying, so by the time I edit all that, it'll be a reasonable length. Um, it's just been a hard month. Hard month. And it's not the medical appointments, it's not the parenting, like the regular parenting aspects, like, are fine. It's, it was the trauma stuff. Um, those couple days were rough. Those nights were rough before we, before I figured out, oh wait, it's me. <laughs> She's, she wants to be with me. Um, those were kind of rough. Um, that's, that's, she's also been teething, which I don't think I mentioned in her video. But those days were off and on rough, um, especially when I feel like I'm touched out, especially when I feel like I'm bored. Um, I'm going to go because my battery is going to die any second now. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, I'll do a cloth diaper update as well. 
It's been cloth diapering for two months. Um, and I will see you guys later. Bye, guys.